Hello, everybody. I am Golden Duffy, and this is episode five, Let's Solve Your Problems. Today, we're going to dive deep into you know, what you are experiencing and why you may not be manifesting solutions in your life. We're going to uncover a lot of things. We're going to uncover your labels. We're going to uncover those things that need to be healed, the wounds that you have going on within that the world is showing you by reflecting your life experience by what is going on in your internal world. So everything you're feeling, the triggers that you're experiencing, they're all coming from within and from past experiences that you have not uh, dealt with, that you have not allowed to be released through your you know, through the energy in your body. Um, You know, when we do this healing work, I'm going to do some at the end for you. We are literally releasing energy out of our cells. We're releasing belief systems. We're releasing all of that activation of that belief system that you are unworthy. So I want to share a little story. When we first moved to California, um, <clears throat> almost six years ago, so crazy. But six years ago, we moved to California with extremely low credit scores. We had money, you know, we had quite a bit of money with us, but we had these very low credit scores that made us feel very unworthy. It made us feel very shameful, right? So that's what we're feeling, right? So that's what we're going to end up attracting. So the very first place that we went to was this real estate agent who I'd met through a friend. We had talked a few times on the phone when I was in Connecticut, and he was so kind and loving, and he just wanted to help us. And he was like, you know, no problem. We're going to find you the perfect place. So we went to his office, and I remember at one point he asked us to have the kids leave and sit outside because he wanted to address, you know, our terrible credit situation and the fact that we were going to have to suffer, (laughs) you know, that we were going to have to live in a really crappy place to build up our credit. And I remember sitting there and he was on a speakerphone with another real estate agent and she said something about charity, something about, you know, these, this landlord is not going to take charity. He's not going to do charity for someone that he doesn't know. And I just like all of a sudden, I got really angry and I got really frustrated. And I thought, this is not who we are. Like, how dare they say that we're a charity case or that we're someone who is not worthy of living somewhere amazing? You know, my biggest thing was like, I didn't move to California to live in a slum. Like, I came here to thrive, I came here to create abundance, I came here to experience life to the fullest. And I'm not going to settle. And when you get in that mindset and you step into your power and you step into your worthiness, miracles happen. Let me just tell you. So we left his office somewhat in a huff. You know, I was like, it it just, it made me to the point where it was like, you know, there's action and anger. Like sometimes triggers are not a good thing. And sometimes, I mean, they're always a good thing because they're always going to show you that window in your healing. But what they do sometimes is they they spark you into action and they help you to step into your worthiness. Like we are better than this. Like this circumstance does not define us and we have money and we're willing to work hard and we're going to succeed. So that was our that was our vibe once we left his office. But coming into that office, I would say I was definitely fearful. I had issues with this credit score situation, feeling like, ooh, is anybody going to let us live here, you know? So what ended up happening over – the course of just a very short couple of days, uh, we, it was funny. We were driving through um, to go look at rentals because we were looking at rentals like crazy. We had nowhere to live. We were staying in a friend's home for 10 days and then ended up in a hotel. So we had nowhere to live. So we were definitely like under a little bit of pressure paying, you know, $250 a night for a hotel and also being very unsettled, you know, being unsettled with our girls, being unsettled. We had the cats in the hotel. Uh, There was no privacy. It was just, it was, it was madness. Like I felt very ungrounded. I felt very, anxious, very, very anxious. Like I need my home. I need my security. I need to know that we did the right thing by moving across the country. So we were actually driving to a different town, a couple of towns through where we live now, and we needed to get gas. And we pulled off this exit. And I remember looking around and there was this beautiful town plaza with a big movie theater and 75 stores and like everything you could ever imagine. It's like this planned community where everything's five minutes away, a Costco, a Target. And I lived in Connecticut where I had to drive 35 minutes through an inner city to get to a Target you know, and 45 minutes to get to a mall. So this was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So 
we get off the highway and I, I write down the name of the town, Aliso Viejo. And the hilarious thing about that is I had already written this town down and I had written down the high school when I was talking to a friend who lived in California and she was telling me all the different areas that we could live. So it was there. It was already there. It's like your soul already knows where you're going. You're already getting the clues if you're paying attention. And I didn't even realize that until years later when I found this note from her that I had written down in Connecticut. I remember sitting in my house writing down these notes and I saw the town that we ended up in. So that was really cool. So we come through this town. I'm like, oh my God, I think we could live here. This is awesome. And the next day I get an email from apartments.com that an apartment had come up in this town, Aliso Viejo. And I thought, oh my God, that's so cool. So we went to go look at it and it was like resort living. Like they put us on a golf cart. They brought us all around. There was a gym. There was a couple of pools. There was hot tubs. We had never lived in an experience like that. And the apartment was amazing. It was 1,700 square feet. It was super clean super big, like everything checked off all the boxes of what we needed to feel safe and secure and in a home. But through that year living in an apartment, we decided condensed living was not for us. You know, the mufflers and the people and uh, a lot of different things, contrasting things happened, which made us feel like, okay, we're ready for a home. They also were going to raise our rent, which was enough to, if we were going to pay that, we could just pay to live in a house. So we found this house through a friend of ours and came into it with, you know, we had been working on our credit. We had financed some furniture and that was helping me to get our get my credit back, but uh, Michael's credit was still pretty low. So this woman kind of took a look at us and she was like, I, you know, I don't know if I want to take a chance on these people. And the fact that Michael's a contractor and he can fix a lot of things, we agreed to do a lot of things. A lot of things, like way too many things to move into this house just to make this woman happy and accept us as our unworthy selves, right? Like that's how we felt. So we painted the cabinets. We redid floors. I mean, we just did everything we possibly could to make the house beautiful for ourselves, yes, because it wasn't like my dream home, but it was like the next step, right? It was a home. It chucked off almost you know, a lot of the boxes, not all of the boxes. Well, through that course of that year, we were not really getting along with this woman. Um, Let's just say she was unappreciative. (laughs) Let's just say that. Always paying our rent on time, always being very um, strategic with our credit scores and building them back up and feeling, starting to really feel the worthiness of living here and creating abundance. And, you know, Michael's business really started to take off. My business was doing really well. And So it comes time, like we have to look for a new house because things are not working out with this woman and our lease was up. So we ended up scouring for houses for a long time and we found this one particular that I knew in my heart of hearts was my house. Like I walked into the home. I get the chills even just talking about it today. I walked into this house and it was $600 over our price range. And I remember my energy healer saying, And we were just kind of making rent in the other house. So that felt really like we're going to be taking a chance. And I remember my energy healer that I was working with at the time said, you know, you've got to up level. You guys have to up level. You've got to, you know, trust and have faith and just take this next step. So, and, you know, we don't live through, you know, we don't have jobs with just an hourly rate. We are entrepreneurs, so we make our own economy. So we knew that it was potential for us to create this, econ- you know, this income, this extra income, if, uh, you know, we believed it, if we lived in our abundance, if we truly stepped in and trusted that we had the power to do that. So I remember talking to this woman on the phone and we had, you know, sent some paperwork over and you know, our credit scores were okay. They weren't fantastic, but they were okay. And I remember when it came down to signing the lease, she wanted an extra security deposit. So she wanted like $4,000 on top of $4,000. So she wanted $8,000 for us to move into this house. And I said, no, I was like, hell no. I know who I am. I know that I have the power to create and I know that house is mine. Did not know at the time. And I'm thankful that I did not know this that there were two other people that she was considering besides us. But she chose us because we had written this beautiful letter about our family and Michael's a contractor and because this house was mine. I knew that. Like I knew the universe had set me up with a house that checked every single box that was beyond my imagination was just, we're still here. You know, it's been 
it's almost five years in this home and we're, we're just thrilled to, to be here still. So I remember talking to my real estate agent and she was like, you're going to say no? <laughs> like She couldn't believe it. She's like, we have looked at 25 houses. We finally found you the perfect house and you're going to say no. And I said, no, we're worth more than this. I know that. I know we're going to take care of this home as if it's our own. I know that we are the perfect people for her and I don't need to put that much out to prove that, right? Like I'm not coming from desperation. I'm coming from my own worthiness. I'm coming from my own power. So when I stood in that power, she was fine. She was like, okay, great. And it's been an incredible experience to to be working with this woman and, and living in her home. And it's just been, you know, all positive, but we created it from the energy coming in. Like think about the energy that we created with the other house, right? We came in lackful, we came in unworthy, and it was literally a shit show the whole time we lived there. Here, it's like there's been no negative. Everything has just worked out so well for us here. And we have that energy of worthiness and power and abundance. And so your internal world is going to it's gonna show you. It's going to show you what you're attracting by how you're feeling about yourself. So we're going to have these circumstances that are going to come into our life that many times are a calling for us to heal or a calling for us to say, have you healed? Have you healed from this yet? Or are you still being triggered by it? Are you still feeling like that worthless person? Are you still feeling like that person with desperate energy that you have to beg and you have to work really hard to create what you want? So ask yourself that when you're coming to certain circumstances and situations, who am I? Who am I in this? Who am I representing in this? Am I representing the labels of my childhood, of what my parents said about me? Am I representing what my ex-wife said about me? Am I representing what my old boss said about me, you know? So ask yourself that because whatever you're representing, whatever you're considering as yourself, that's what you're creating as. So you got to clean that up. And how to do that? Well, we'll do that little exercise at the end that I think is really going to help you to uncover those labels, to release that energy that has been trapped inside of you that is still um, helping you to create from your wounds. So it's so... This work is so life transforming, and I ha- can see evidence of it throughout my life experience. You will still create what you want when you're dealing with fear and when you're dealing with unworthiness. You will still end up okay. You will still end up creating miracles. You will still end up at everything always working out with you, but it's just harder. It's harder to get there. And if you're not super aware and working on yourself, you're probably just going to create a lot of energy and a lot of contrast problems, challenges that don't help you to truly focus on what is wanted so that you can manifest it. And we manifested this house in one week. We had one week one week to leave this woman's home or she was going to charge us more money and I just refused to give her any more of my money. I was not in a great place with her. I can totally admit it. And I'm sure that I healed a lot of wounds from dealing with her. So in one week's time, I looked at probably 25 to 30 houses and, you know, everyone just didn't. And, and, and I was getting really close. The house that I looked at before this one, I was like, okay, if we had to settle, this would be it. And I just kept getting this voice like, never settle. You don't have to settle. You don't have to settle, you guys. We don't ever have to settle. In fact, settling, what settling does sometimes is it helps us to take our foot off the gas of trying to create. And sometimes it'll bring in what you want. But the truth is settling, like I did for that home, created a lot of angst that year. Now, it got us to where we are today, yes, so who knows what would have happened if we didn't settle. But the truth is, you know, everything is a process. Everything is a journey, and everything is going to lead you to the next thing. So there's no mistakes. You can't screw this up. It's all about learning and becoming more aware and healing those wounds within. All right, so I want to talk about survival mode for a little bit because there's A lot of people that live in survival mode, and you don't even realize you're living in survival mode. I think there's been a lot of survival mode this year, for sure. Um, Survival mode is when you're living at the bottom centers of your energy. So we have all these energy centers. If you don't know about it, it's called the chakra system. Look it up. It's very interesting. 
I never really had any interest in the chakras. Uh, the only study I've ever done of the chakras is what I found online and what has come through me as a result of that, what has come through me in my energy sessions. I can feel energy in people's bodies. Even when we do meditations at the end of this and no one's on here with me yet, I can still feel like who's going to be on here. I know it sounds crazy, but I can still feel energy in my body and I can still clear it for you even if you're listening to this later tonight or tomorrow or next week. So that's pretty cool. But the chakra centers, basically, you've got seven of them. Some say there's 12, but let's just deal with the seven in case this is the first time you've heard of it. I don't want to blow you out of the water. So the bottom chakra is below your spine. It's called the root chakra. And the root chakra deals a lot with your prosperity, your support from the universe, your feelings of um, if you know if you're feeling fearful or if you're feeling lackful. A lot of that can come from like your blocked root chakra, and then above the root chakra is um, your sacral chakra, and the sacral chakra is below the belly button, and that is your energy center of um, emotions, your emotional field, your creative center, your sexual field. All of that is in your sacral chakra. So if that's blocked, you might have trouble creating. You might have trouble having an emotional field that's balanced. You know, you might feel really out of whack and you might have trouble in your sexual field, especially if you've, you know, had any trouble in that area in your life, you know, molestation or any of that stuff, your sexual um, chakra could be really, really uh, blocked up. So Above that is your solar plexus. Now, this is your power center. It's above your belly button. It's in the center of your body. This is your self-confidence, your power, your uh, self-esteem. All of the energy of, you know, coming from that like super confident being, knowing who you are, knowing that you have the power to create, that's all in your solar plexus. Then above that is your heart chakra, your throat chakra, your um, third eye, and your um, crown chakra, which is like your connection to spirit, right? So in this chakra field, if you've got blockages, you would ha- you will have trouble doing certain things. So when I do energy releases for people, I like to clear that out. I like to clear any energy that's, you know, creating and you will create from fear, you will feel low vibrational belief systems. It really does uh it really does mess with your game if you don't have any awareness of the chakras and you've never connected with them because we can do this stuff on our own. In fact, Joe Dispenza on YouTube has a really cool thing called Blessing the Energy Centers. I love doing that one because it works in the whole chakra field and it helps you to just clear it out. So that's the chakras. And if you're in survival mode, you tend to be living in the bottom chakras. So you've got the fear going on in your root chakra, you know, the the sacral chakra, your, your emotions are all messed up. You're kind of on edge. And your solar plexus is not, um, you know, it's coming from a place of low self-esteem and powerlessness. When you're meditating and you start to move the energy from the bottom of your body to the top, which we'll do a little exercise today so I can show you how to do that. Joe Dispenza teaches us how to do that, how to create and bring energy to your third eye so that you're literally pushing the energy up and you're getting into a space and an awareness of your non-physical self. And Joe Dispenza does a lot of this where he helps you to get out of your mind, get out of your body, and kind of go into space, which means you can show yourself that your consciousness lives beyond your body. And when you know that your consciousness lives beyond your body, you can create a lot more miracles and you can live in the state of awe. You can live in a state of knowing that miracles are happening, that there is a non-physical existence, that you know it's not just you. You know, that there is this universal energy, God source that is co-creating with you and creating um, things uh, beyond your imagination, which is so amazing. When you get into that state of living, I think they call it like level five. When you're in that state of living, there is no problems. It's like everything that's coming to you is just an opportunity for you to work. It's just an opportunity for you to focus. It's an opportunity for you to clear out and to create more awareness and healing around what's going on in your inner world. So it's very cool. So we'll do a little exercise at the end with that because that's that's some of so that's some of the fun work that um, you may have never done before, and you may not even have like a real belief of it. But it doesn't matter because you'll feel the energy in your body and you'll feel it moving. 
So that's the cool part about it is you don't really have to believe in it. Again, I had no knowledge of this. I just started to feel energy in my body and that's what made me curious about it and uh, had me you know, researching it and just letting whatever was coming through me, the wisdom, the energy, the expression, I was just allowing that to happen with many, many clients, many clients. Okay. Here's a cool mantra that has to do with that, that I started this weekend that I really like. And it's, this was from Fred Dodson. He's also one of my favorites that I am. I am, uh, he's been on my shows before. He's fantastic. So he wrote Parallel Universes of Self. I have it right there. I love that book so much. And I loved listening to it. The audio is fantastic. And he says, I am not the body. I am energy. So once you start disconnecting from the body and the physical realm and you start getting into the energetic field, you just start getting awareness of things more. Uh, One of my other favorite authors is Anita Morjani, and she had a near-death experience. She had 80% of her body was filled with cancerous tumors, and she crossed over, came back and completely healed, and she does speaking on this subject. She wrote a few books, and she says, like, when you pass away – when you go over to the other side, it's like we've been walking around with flashlights here and it's like a spotlight comes on and you can see all this other energy, all this other, you know, universal um, co-creation. And the fact that we, that that exists to me is so exciting because it's like I wake up every day and I think, I don't even know what's going to happen today. Like so many possibilities, so many opportunities to experience goodness and to experience miracles in this wonderful world that we live in that, you know, that's just a cool way to live. That's a cool frequency to tune into. Okay. So when it comes in, when it comes to stepping into your worthiness, like you can't necessarily fake it, but what you can do is start going within and asking yourself, you know, where is the foundation of feeling unworthy? Where did that come from? And, you know, am I able to release it? Am I able to spend enough time in that inner space to connect with my power, to connect with who I am, and to feel that expression of energy coming through me? Because once you feel that expression of energy coming through you, through quieting your mind and really getting into your inner space, into your inner being, you will feel that power and then you will behave differently. It will help the healing process because you know who you really are and you know that you are unshakable, that your foundation is unshakable, that no matter what happens, you're always going to be taken care of, that you're always going to be supported because you've, you know, you've healed those wounds. You've released the energy that's, that's clogging those chakras. You've started to show yourself. You're starting to witness the abundance around you. You're starting to see the flow of energy coming into your life, the goodness coming into your life. You're starting to see people, you know, co-creating with you, being partners, loving you unconditionally and showing you so much beauty and joy and fun and lightheartedness. That's how you know that what's going on inside is really, really in a strong foundation and that you're able to share that love, that you're able to be an extension of that love because you're not coming from lack. You're not coming from feeling unlovable or unforgivable or shameful. You've really done the work. And we will work on that, I promise. Okay, so anytime you have a negative reaction to a situation, I want you to just back up. (laughs) That's the best thing you can do. Because what happens when something you know, a negative situation happens or a problem or a challenge or whatever you like to call it. I like to call it contrast because it helps us to identify what we don't want. Anytime that happens, our instinct is to attack it. Our instinct is to fix it, right? What is it? How can I fix it? It's making me uncomfortable. I got to go in. I got to figure it out, right? And anytime you're in that mode, you're coming from two places. One is desperation, like I have to fix this right now. I can't live like this. And the other one is you're acting from yourself, like just yourself in just this physical perception. So you're blocking out all of the spiritual connection, all of the co-creation with the universe. Like you're like, if it's to be, it's up to me. I got to go out. I got to kill it. I got to I gotta make it better right? 
So when you do that, you don't leave any space. You don't leave any space. You're literally just reacting. You know, you're you're getting stimulus and you're reacting. You're just there's no space in between your stimulus and your response. And when you can take the space, right? That's what meditation does for you. It teaches you how to take space. It teaches you how to not react. It teaches you to just sit back. Okay. All right. Let's just see. It is what it is, right? Love that statement. It is what it is. Like all the fighting, all the resistance, all of the worry and fear and anxiety is all about tuning into the frequency of what you don't want. All that worry, all that fear, all that anxiety, it's only going to bring you more of the same. It's going to bring you the more more of the same thoughts to worry about, more of the same energy to activate that worry and that fear. And it's not going to tune you into the solution because the problem and the solution have different energies. So they don't match up. So if you're down here in the problem and you're super, super close to it, you cannot possibly find or see a solution. So when we live too much in a problem, we will just continue to activate it. Now, will it get solved? Yes, eventually. It just wickedly slows down the energy. When you're in the problem, it wickedly slows down the energy. And it doesn't allow you to step back and to activate your co-creative partnership, okay, with the universe. So when you're living from that reactive state, you can see a lot of those cycles in your life when you're constantly reacting to people's judgments or the way that they treat you, when you're reactive, it means that you still believe that about yourself. There's still a part of you that believes that about yourself and you feel like you have to fight against them. When the truth is you need to just drop it all. You need to drop the judgments, drop the beliefs, drop the energy around the problem and back away from it. We oftentimes in our family will just say, This doesn't need to be solved right now. You know, this, let's just, I love to do this. Let's just see where the energy takes us. You know, let's take a step. We're not like lazy and we don't lay around waiting, you know, like, like just letting problems just wash over us. We don't do that. What we do is we take the time to create the space to work from a conscious state where we're not just coming from these like unconscious reactions. We get very conscious. Like, what does this mean for me? How does this feel for me? What do I want to happen? That is one of the best questions you can ever ask anyone and of yourself. What do I want to happen? What do I really want to happen? Because when I'm all balled up and I'm all emotional, right? I'm in that sacral chakra and I'm all blocked up and I can only feel one emotion, which is fear or terror or angst or worry, when I'm in that energy, I'm in that lower center, I'm not activating from my intuition. I'm not tuning into the frequency of my intuition, which is going to tell me the next step. The energy will always tell you the next step. Whenever anything gets really hard and the energy is stuck, it's not moving, the best thing you can do is back away. Take a couple of days. Like, Nothing really ever is catastrophic enough that you need to deal with it right then and there. You can just back away from it. And, you know, if you're you're dealing with things like, you know, a little while ago I had a a lady who had a car accident and she was asking me some things about it. And, and, you know, I was like, like, just back away from it for right now and interrupt the thoughts that this is the worst thing that could have happened. And ask yourself, like, where where's the anger coming from? Where's the resentments coming from? Like, where is the foundation of all that? Because this is a call to heal. Everything is a call to heal. All negative emotion is, is a call to heal. It's to go within and ask yourself, what are my beliefs? And are my beliefs going to bring me more of what I want? Or are they going to bring me the opposite? So it seems so simple. But oftentimes I think that we think we've got these blind spots. Like we have this belief system that there's blind spots. This is why people go to therapy. This is why everybody asks everybody else's opinion and no one can go within and ask what's right for themselves. There's, you know, there are, I believe that there are things that we may not be able to see right away. 
But if you go within and you start doing the inner work and you start watching the energy instead of getting all involved and like too focused on one certain solution, you will start to see, you will uncover things for yourself that are going to be hugely beneficial, hugely beneficial to your healing journey and to creating something new, creating something different, no longer creating from the past, right? I can easily and freely, what is that saying? I freely and easily release the old. I joyously welcome the new. Awesome mantra. Okay. So release the need to act from that desperate energy because all desperate energy does is it slows things down and it sets you up with the belief system that you are the only one that can fix anything for anyone. Okay. And when you believe that, when you really and truly believe that there's only this physical experience, that there's no such thing as non-physical guidance or support. You cut off all of these wonderful miracles and blessings that are waiting to come to you. They're literally just like, hello, we're over here, but you're over here and we can't reach you because you're tuned into the wrong station. You're tuned into the problem. We're in the energy of solution you know, when you're ready to just let go, we'll come in, you know, it'll, it'll be time for us all to create together and to create a solution that is beyond, it's beyond your imagination. It's beyond what you could have created with your physical apparatus, with your physical, you know, drive, with your have to go out and kill it energy. So back away from the problem. Once you back away from the problem and give it some space and ask yourself, you know, is there something being called to be healed within me? Then you can go to the next step, which is paying attention to the energy, seeing where the energy calls you to go next, and writing down what you want. People don't. People don't do this. I don't understand why. Writing is the strongest form of focus. And what it does is it not only clarifies your desire, it not only clarifies what you want, but it literally tunes you into the energy of it. It tunes you into the frequency of it. You could write it down, put it in your drawer and not look at it again. And I promise a couple months later, you'll read it and you'll go, "Mm, that all happened. Yep. (laughs) Or something better happened because I couldn't even get my imagination to go where, where this has gone. Writing is the strongest form of focus. So I always ask people when they're struggling with something or something's not moving fast enough or they're not seeing manifestation, write it down. Write it down. Feel for it. What does it feel like? What does it feel like? And when you write it down, just don't don't do I am going statements. Don't say um, start with I am. I am thankful and grateful for this. I am thankful and grateful that this happened. Do it as if it's present day because your subconscious doesn't know what's real and what's not. Present day, put yourself as much as you possibly can into the feeling state of it coming true. And I'm going to help you with that. Okay. So practice, practice, practice interrupting worrisome thoughts fears, anxieties. These love, I don't know why this is, but they love to come in the middle of the night, right? Like when we're like just waking up to go to the bathroom and we just want to go back to sleep and we will get hit with every worrisome thought. And the reason is because you're not in a momentum of your day. So you've got this, you know, this clear space. So anything that you've shoved down, distracted yourself from, not allowed, will usually pop up in the middle of the night. And what I like to do in the middle of the night is practice meditation. So if I wake up and I'm having worrisome thoughts, I will do my best to just blank slate my mind. And I'll help you with that today. Just blank slate your mind. Just imagine that your mind is a blackboard and you just erased it. And it only takes a couple of minutes to be in that state and you will go back to sleep. When it comes to worrisome, anxious thoughts during the day, it's, it's important to understand this. Anytime you're in worry or fear or anxiety, what you're doing is you're active, you're in the activation of the problem and you're in the activation of creating what you do not want. This is why it's so important to shift and pull away from those problems, right? Let them go. Let them go for a little while. You know what? I don't have to think about that right now. That is so powerful. I'm going to take this time. 
I'm going to go out in nature. I'm going to watch a funny movie. I'm going to get away from the problem. I'm going to deactivate from the problem. This is not living in disillusion. This is not living in denial. That's not what this is about. Because when you go into meditation, you're going to deal with these feelings. So it's not like I'm pushing them down. I'm drinking. I'm doing drugs. I'm not paying attention to them. This is about stepping into a place of power within your own neural pathways and saying, We're not going, we're not firing there anymore. Because remember, these neural pathways, when they fire, they wire together. So when you fire a worrisome thought, an anxious thought, it's going to take you on that roller coaster ride of all those fears and all those feelings. And you'll see the momentum. Eventually, you'll be, you know, (laughs) completely crazed and beside yourself and maybe crying or, you know, telling your friends how miserable you are. So once you start to interrupt them, you're going to create that space and then go into meditation and start asking the questions. You know, why does this bother me so much? Um, Where does the foundation of that powerlessness come from? What do I really believe about myself? Uh, What do I want to represent in this situation? Do I want to represent an unworthy, um, labeled, you know, low life, lazy, I don't know, whatever that that critical self-talk you have going on that I talked about last week, whatever that critical self-talk is, that's what you're representing from when you don't deal with your stuff. When you don't go within and ask, where did this come from? Oh, geez, my grandmother used to say that to me, you know? Wasn't. My grandmother never said anything but beautiful things to me. It was other people she didn't talk nice about. Just kidding. I loved my grandmother. All right. So when it comes to interrupting those worrisome thoughts, remember this, okay? When you're in worry, when you're in anxiety, when you're in fear, you are taking yourself away from the life force. So you're taking yourself away from that spiritual energy, that life force that wants to be expressed through you. The energy of solution, the energy of everything is working out for you, the energy of knowing that as you picture something in your mind, a person, a situation, um, a, you know, a circumstance, as you picture that in your mind and you see it playing out in worst case scenarios, you are detracting from the life force of solution. You are detracting from um, all things working out for this person, this situation, this circumstance. So see them how you want to see them. See your situation as you want to see it. And as you see that situation or that person working everything out, feel it. Practice feeling it. What does it feel like to be so relieved that everything worked out? What does it feel like to have, um, you know, my child doing really well in school? What does it feel like to have, you know, adult children that have turned into successful, productive, happy, you know, in love people. What does that feel like? Like, What is that relief to you? What does that feel like? And then focus more on the thoughts that allow that attraction, that allow that frequency, that allow you to tune more and more into that radio station. If you are so worried, you got to come up with a mantra. You got to come up with a mantra that's going to allow you to, um, to say these things over and over and over again, that it's okay, that everything's okay, that we are creating from this really beautiful energy together, that we are in the state of solution, that we are in the state of all things working out for all of us all the time. Okay? All right. Super. Okay. So next, Um, again, you know, focusing on that worry, that anxiety, it just activates more of what you don't want. It attracts more fear for you, attracts more things for you to feel fearful about. It keeps you in a state of um, reactivity so that you can't really respond to people. You just become very reactive. Uh, It attracts more fear. It slows down the energy and it makes you miss opportunities for solutions. So you literally will miss things coming into your life experience that could have made this work out much faster. So that's why I say it slows down the energy because you're over here looking at the problem and the solution's like over here. You're not going to see it. 
So, you know, you're going to, you're going to miss people. You're going to miss opportunities that are going to create that solution for you that are going to help you to activate more of that relief energy. You know, you can't get happy when you got to be happy now. It's not like I'm going to be happy when this happens because if you're waiting for that initial relief and that initial happiness to happen, you're not in the frequency of it. So you have to draw it in more. <clears throat> you have to focus on more opportunities to feel that way. And sometimes you got to take your foot off the gas. Like you have to take your foot off of the the energy that has created so much angst. And put yourself in the peaceful, calming energy, which comes with quieting your mind. <clears throat> A practice that allows you to turn everything off. When you turn everything off, you stop momentum. When you stop the momentum, you get a chance to choose. And you get a chance to choose what comes next by not being so reactive. Okay? Cool. All right. So we're going to hop into some energy release stuff that I like to do at the end of my videos. And the reason why I like to do these <clears throat> is basically because I feel... I feel like there is a lot of people and a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of energies within our bodies that we're not aware of. And if you've never done this type of work or this type of, you know, focused release, they call it, it is something that is very transforming. Because if we have all this this energy trapped in our bodies, trapped in our cells, we are we are subject to the belief systems that those energies drive, right? Like I said, your chakra systems, when they're blocked, they're going to drive certain energies. So you're going to do things from certain energies. You know, you're going to have addictions. You're going to have, um, <clears throat> you're going to have triggers. You're going to, you know, this is why a lot of bullies create bullies, right? Because they bully someone and that someone feels so powerless that they have to force their power on someone. I mean, they've said many times, Bullies are usually bullied by their parents, and I've seen that with with kids, with my own children, with their own friends, with their own people that have bullied them. These kids feel powerless, so they have to exert their power over someone. So when we come from that energy of powerlessness, we just create situations that are negative, that are going to draw this negative attention to us and not create solutions. So it's about getting really aware knowing that you know a lot of things that have happened to you in your life experience have been your in your invitation to heal even though you may not have taken and accepted the invitation and showed up for the party but now you can and that's what this energy release work will provide you is an opportunity to get clear an opportunity to release energy out of your cells out of your dna out of your energetic field and out of your belief systems so that you can begin to create from a clean slate, from a place of knowing who you are, knowing your power, knowing that you can um, be, do, or have anything you want. Yeah, that one's coming. That one's for sure. No doubt about it. I am living proof, and I've seen a lot of people do it. It's just deciding. It's just deciding that you're going to step into an identity and creating from that identity. So start out with writing down, you know, what what is the circumstance? What is the situation? Okay. So I'm trying to think if um if I have any challenges right now that I can share or any any contrast that's going on right now. I'm trying to think of some like past experiences that I can share with you. So if there's, you know, if there's a situation in your life or a person in your life that you're feeling a lot of angst about. I want you to write down their name or write down that situation. So let's just take money because that one's really easy and that one I've experienced a few times in my life not having enough of. <laughs> and let's just write down, you know, that statement. That statement that causes you so much worry and so much fear around whatever it is. But I'll say for, for money's sake, I'll say, I worry there's never enough. I worry I'm not going to be able to pay my bills, okay? These are not true statements right now, but in the past they have been. So you take that fear and that fear for me lands right in my chest. Like whenever I've had anxiety around money, it's usually lands right in my heart chakra because I've got worthy unworthiness issues or like whatever. So I still have energy there that I still have an opportunity to clear or one of you guys does and it's being called to my attention. Okay. 
So you write down that situation. That's how I feel. Like you got to go where you're at. This is where I'm at. I got to I gotta face where I'm at and I got to go within and I got to ask myself, like, where does the foundation of this come from? Well, it comes from my childhood. It comes from my parents. It comes from my grandparents. It comes from my teachers. It comes from whoever it is that told you that there wasn't enough, who told you that you're going to have to work really hard and you're probably never going to make it, that there, you're always going to be struggling and there's always going to be bills that are piled on top of you that are going to cause you not to be able to breathe. Sound familiar? I feel like a lot of us grew up like that. <clears throat> that wasn't a huge energy in my house, kind of interestingly, but there were things that were said, you know, money doesn't grow on trees and money's hard to come by and, you know, rich people are evil and whatever. So all of those energies and anything attached to your situation, you got to look at that. So we take a look at that. We see where we are energetically. Then we start to ask ourselves, okay, I'm going to dig down. I'm digging. I'm digging. Where does this come from? And then you have to decide for yourself that you're going to release that energy, which we'll do in a second. <clears throat> and then it's what do I want? So once we once we do the energetic release, you let go of all that fear. You let go of all that energy of, you know, not trusting, not trusting the universe, not trusting God, not trusting, not having faith that everything is going to work out okay. Once you release that energy, then you can write down what you do want because you can't change belief systems. You have to release the old ones in order to create from the new ones, right? So I freely and easily release the old and I joyously welcome the new. Okay. So we're going to go into this little little exercise together. So I invite you to sit up and close your eyes and just take a nice deep breath and breathe out. And just breathe all the energy out from our from our discussion, from my discussion with myself. <laughs> and just let it out. Take another deep breath. And release. All right. So I want you to think about your circumstance, your situation. You know, the thing that has been calling your attention to the negative. I want you to just feel it. Yeah, just feel where it is in your body. You're going to feel it. It's either in your stomach or it's in your lower body or it's in your heart. A lot of times we feel stress in our stomachs, right? Like in that abdomen area, that power center. Okay. So I want you to ask yourself what is at the center of that energy. Like what, ooh, so much, so much energy moving. What is the belief? What is the energy that is being called to that is causing you so much angst, causing you so much worry? So you may have a belief that you're not going to make it, that you're not going to succeed, that your business is going to fail, that you don't have any control over anything. Ooh, that one came up. <laughs> okay. So just feel where these feel in your body because everybody probably has a little bit of these. That I'm not supported by the universe, that things don't work out for me, that I'm an unlucky person. Oh, that's a big one. I'm an unlucky person. If, uh, if something bad's going to happen, it's going to happen to me. Oh, please, 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 please get rid of that. So just feel all this energy in your body. I can feel it. It's activating, which w while it's activating, it's starting to release because we're starting to stir it up. So then going within, we'll just call upon that unworthiness energy, the energy of not being good enough, the energy of feeling like we are um, ashamed of who we are, ashamed of what we've created from. Uh, we've been you know, told that we're wrong, told that we're not smart, that we don't know what we're doing, you know, that we've made bad decisions, all of these energies. This is interesting the way this is being activated. So just, just pay attention to where this is in your body. I'm definitely feeling it in the center, but also very much in the heart chakra. So that financial lack, you know, that belief that you will never get ahead a belief that you will always be in debt, that energy of oh, that unworthiness energy, that powerless energy is so strong right now. So being unworthy of goodness, unworthy of solutions, unworthy of all things working out for you. So just take a deep, deep breath and let's just clear all of those negative energies from our cells, from our DNA, from our energetic fields, from our neural pathways. Let's just clear all of the lack, the limitations, 
the the financial struggles, the uh, lack of abundance, the lack of joy. Ooh, let's get rid of that one. The depression, the mood swings, the imbalances in our emotional fields, the blockages to our creativity, the blockages to our sexual energy, the blockages to our feminine and masculine energies. That one just came up for somebody. And just let all that energy flow out of you. So you're just going to imagine like smoke. It's just clearing. It's coming from the bottom of your body. It's just releasing all the energy of not trusting, of not having faith, of feeling fear, anxiety, lack, concern, all those low vibrational belief systems that make you create the opposite of what is wanted. Yeah. So let's just deactivate that. So coming up into your brain, into all those neural pathways of low vibration, just release from that, from the top of your head, from your neck, from your shoulders, all that tension, all that belief that you are the only one that can fix anything, that physical, that deep, deep connection to only being physical. Yeah, release that. You're so much more than the physical, so much more. We are an expression of energy. And it's time that we believed that, focused on that, and called upon that more often. All right. So we're going to step back in and just take a breath. Yeah, that was a lot of energy, a lot of angst leaving for a lot of people. As we do this, we clear it as a consciousness. So we clear it as a collective. So as you clear it for yourself, you clear it for others. Clear that throat. Mm, Clear that throat chakra. Yeah, release all energy in the throat chakra that has caused you not to speak your truth, that has caused you to <clears throat> hide, to feel shame, to be scared, to voice your opinion. Let's just bring in lots of beautiful light. Yeah, bring in the light of source, the light of God, the light of infinite energy and possibility the light of limitless potential, infinite streams of wisdom, infinite dreams, dreaming beyond this physical world, allowing us to really step in and to decide that it is okay to dream big, that it is more than just okay. The fact that you can dream it means you have the potential to create it. Yeah, feel that in the solar plexus. coming right into your power center, just feel all that beautiful light expanding out like a great big ball of sunshine, activating your self-confidence, your self-esteem, your worthiness, your strength, your freedom, your power to create. Coming into this infinite knowing that you are so powerful. You are beyond powerful. Yeah, bring that, bring all that light into your heart and let's just stream this expression of unconditional love. If you've never felt the unconditional love in your life experience, I invite you to feel it now. Anytime you close your eyes and focus on your heart and let this unconditional love stream into your heart, it will go into your field and it will allow you to share it with others. It will allow you to feel the self-love of who you are. It'll allow you, it'll turn on the light of your own self-love. That activation of that power in your heart, power of love, the power of connection, the power of knowing who you are. And then bringing that light all the way down to the body, we're just going to connect. We're going to deeply, deeply connect to our prosperity to our support, our trust, and our faith in this universe to provide with us this wonderful experience, this wonderful journey where we get to decide and we get to create and we get to heal and we get to become more and more of an expression every single day of what is good, of the life force that runs through us, of the power that we have to create and become And the power that we have to know that we are this infinite source of wisdom and the power that we have to express it in all transactions, in all relationships, energy is everywhere and everything is energy. 
So as you project that energy, as you use your thoughts, your beliefs, your feelings to project the energy of what is wanted, you will quickly see the results of activating the solution. So just feel that energy all around you, activating, connecting, clicking into place. The manifestations that you have asked for, the desires that go beyond your imagination being fulfilled. Just know that you are a powerful being with the ability to create from the wisdom and intelligence of the expression of all that is. Deep. That's deep stuff. That's good stuff. So you can do that at any time you feel like you need to release energy, anytime you feel like your mind is starting to take over and you want to wipe the slate clean. You can do that. You can wipe the slate clean. You can have no thought. You just have to practice. Um, we have a challenge coming up in the M21 Revolution group on Facebook. It's coming up on May 1st with my beautiful partner, Jess Gumkowski, who's just coming off of a Costa Rica retreat. So... I'm really excited to connect with her. I'm really excited to create again with her. We've done hundreds of these challenges. What we do is we help you to create a deeper meditation practice if you already have one. If you don't have one, we help you with the introductory phases of that. We teach universal law. We do a lot of wonderful things in there. We create miracles. We allow people to express and become the powerful beings that they are. So M21 Revolution, it is free to join. Just ask to join. We'll let you in the group. You can see what's going on. There's hundreds of videos in there, lots of beautiful inspired quotes, and we will start the challenge on May 1st, which is donation-based for whatever's on your heart to um, exchange value. We love to exchange value because it helps you to value the information more and it get, it helps you to create more benefit and more results when you exchange the value. Also, my books are available on my website, www.livelifegolden.com. I've got Quantum Speak, which is our story of how we moved to California. It really breaks down manifestation for you. It's a very simple read, but very powerful. And then, um, and if you do own that book, I suggest you read it again or pop it open every once in a while because there are messages for you in that book that may mean something different now. The other book I wrote was Quantum Speak for Parents, which I um, am doing better about marketing. (laughs) See, I'm changing my story with that one. But that is my 28 years of parenting experience of doing it where I didn't feel like I was doing it so good. You know, I had a funky energy in my house to cleaning that up and to creating incredible relationships with our children and and our family and just creating a wonderful energy in our home. So those are uh, the things that I have going on right now, and there's more to come. I am in creation mode. I am super excited about this podcast and all of the guests that I'm going to have on and just, just the expansion and growth of all of us. All right, people. Love you all. Peace out.